In this video, we're going to determine whether a given relation is a function. So in the introduction video, I mentioned there are different ways that we can express relations. And here are uh, four of the most common ways. The first way is a mapping. A mapping is when you set up two ovals, where the first one is your input, so we just label it with x, and the second one is your outputs, which we label y. And then we put all of the uh, values of the inputs. Those are called the domain. So the, the set of inputs are called domain. We put the domain here. And then we put the set of outputs called the range here. So this could be uh, 1 and 2. And this could be 1, 2, 3. And then we draw arrows to connect. So in our input, let's say 1 goes to 1. And 1 also goes to 2. And then 2 goes to 3. So the way we determine whether this particular mapping, so this is a relation, because it is a relationship between x and y, but is it also a function? What we're looking for with mappings is, does any input map to more than one output? And if the answer is yes, then it's not a function. So because 1 maps to 1 and 2, this particular example is not a function. On the flip side, let's say we have our inputs are 4, 5, and 6, and our output is 7, and 4 maps to 7, and 5 maps to 7, and 6 maps to 7. In this case, every input maps to exactly one output, so it is a function. So again, what we're looking for is, does any input map to more than one output? And if it does, then it's not a function. We could also be given a table. And if we're given a table, what we're looking for in the input or x values, does anything repeat? So if this is my input and this is my output, and I have 1, 2, 3, 5, and then in my outputs I have 2, 4, 200, negative 10, I'm looking to see, do any of these repeat? Because if any of those repeat, that means that I have one input mapping to more than one output, which would not be a function. Since Every input is unique in the table. We would say this is a function. This one would be a function. Uh, not a function, just a regular relation could be something like this. We could have x and y, my input and my output. And my input could be negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0. And then my output would be 6, 7, 8, negative 10. In this case, you notice that the negative 1 repeats. I have a negative 1 here and a negative 1 here. That indicates that there is one input mapping to more than one output. This is not a function. And really, there's no hyphens in between not and a and function. I don't know why I did that. Yeah, we'll just get rid of those. OK, so that's mapping and table. And this would also, if you're given a set of ordered pairs, you would also just want to see, do the x values repeat? If the x values repeat, then it is not a function. Uh, if you're given a graph, the way you check a graph is we do something called the vertical line test. The vertical line test uh, just means that you should be able to drop vertical lines anywhere in the graph. And it should hit the graph no more than one time. If it hits the graph in more than one place, then it is not a function. The vertical line test just says you can drop vertical lines anywhere in the graph. And as long as it doesn't hit the graph more than once, it is a function. So some examples, let's say I have a graph here, and I have a nice parabola right there. I can drop a vertical line anywhere in the graph, and I never hit the graph more than once. And we do have to be careful with certain graphs, because while it almost looks like, wait, I could drop a vertical line, it almost looks like this is vertical, it's just getting steep really quickly, and it's all unique, and it, it, it is changing. So we do have to be careful with graphs like that. So in this case, because any vertical line will hit the graph exactly once, we would say that this is a function. If I have a graph like this, and let's do something like that, very pretty. Uh, but here, if we look really carefully, if I draw a vertical line right here, I'm going to hit the graph in more than one place. So if I draw a vertical line here, I hit it in three different places. That indicates to me that this is not a function. Another one to be careful of, sometimes we can get a little bit fancy. Um, and we could have graphs that have like open and closed circles. 
So I might have an open circle here with a ray pointing that direction and a closed circle here with a line segment and then an open circle, something like this. In this case, if I draw a vertical line right here, that's a closed circle, so it indicates it's passing through the graph there, but that open circle indicates it is not crossing through the graph there. So this particular function, uh, sorry, excuse me, this particular relation is a function. It does pass the vertical line test because this point technically isn't part of the graph. So in this case, this is a function. And the last thing we could be given is an equation. And equations are a little bit trickier to determine uh, whether the relation is a function or not. And the best way that I've come up with uh, deciding whether the relation is a function or not, if you can easily isolate y, then it is probably a function. If you have to do something weird to get y by itself, it is probably not a function. And again, it's really kind of hard to describe when equations are functions or not. That's the best that I've come up with. Um, so for example, if I have 13x minus 27y equals 14, I can pretty easily, I mean, it's kind of gross numbers, but I could easily get y by itself. I could subtract 13x from both sides. I could divide both sides by negative 27. And then y is by itself. You might also recognize that this is a slanted line, and all slanted lines are functions. So if you recognize the type of equation that it is, and you know that it's a function, then you're good to go. Um, but I, I could get y by itself by doing those steps. I could take away 13x from both sides. Equals negative 13x plus 14. And then I could divide both sides by negative 27. Again, I never said anything about it not being terribly gross, but it's not super awkward to get y by itself. Um, so this is a function. This, and again, it's a linear equation. All linear equations are functions, except for uh, vertical lines. So this guy is a function. Hello. Whoa. Arrow. OK, great. An example of like something that's like complicated to get y by itself, if I have x squared plus y squared equals 27, so it doesn't seem that bad. I subtract x squared from both sides to isolate y squared. Fine, y squared is equal to negative x squared plus 27. But here's the weird part. To get y by itself, I have to take the square root of both sides. To me, that's doing something weird. Um, so I take the square root. And when I take the square root of the side, not the variable I'm isolating, I do include that plus or minus. If you have to include a plus or minus, you're probably not dealing with a function. So then we would have y equals plus or minus the square root of negative x squared plus 27. This is awkward and weird. This is not a function.